especially in the spring, like shad spawns, um, the turtles will eat the shad that don't die right then. Um, they're the ones that maybe get knocked around a little bit and end up getting really slow and, you know, kind of you know, just making right turns and doing circles and stuff. Later in the day at like, one, you know, 10 to 1 o'clock, uh, that's where those, those turtles um, are going to eat those shad. But on lakes that, and this was taught to me by a really old guy um, on uh, Lake Cherokee. Uh, that's a lake that has a, not a lot of uh, like wood and stuff in it. It's got a bunch of rocks. If you see a turtle in a, a lake like that, he told me this, and this is unbelievable, but if, if you see a turtle, within 50 yards there's a brush pile. And uh, that's not, not a cane pile or any of that stuff. This is a hardwood brush pile. And since I have learned that it is so true um, and people don't don't give the give the turtle their their credit but now especially with live scope and forward face and sonar when you see the turtle you got to pay attention and, and you know do your due diligence to you know sweep around and if you find that that pile it uh the, you know obviously it's like an oasis in the desert type thing but even the 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 stuff on the bank um if you see like up north the whatever they're called the little mink things uh scurrying down the rocks they're eating the little crawfish in there I mean, that's a good place to fish because there's obviously a bunch of crawfish and you know a bunch of things for them to eat uh and the the coons on the bank whenever you see a coon in daylight period um you know there's obviously a, a feeding time happening, or it's got rabies. But uh, <laughs> move to the next one. Um, so I hit on the mentality earlier, but that is uh, the biggest key to this thing. And you've you've got to. Um, I can remember a tournament on the Red River that. I was perfectly okay with catching three bass. Um, they were gonna be three good ones, but um, that was, it was that or chase a lot of small ones and maybe catch a limit of six pounds. Um, or I fish all day long as hard as I can and, and you know get three to five bites. And uh, I actually almost won that event um, and only weighed in three bass on the second day. And that, that's what really killed me when Patrick Walters beat me. I was running 170 miles round trip and Patrick was running a quarter of a mile. And uh, it was just one of those things that, that you just got to be fully aware of. And you, know, you don't wanna psych yourself up. You don't wanna, maybe I'll go down there and I'll get on them real quick and you know, catch them. Once you have that in your head and you get down there and you ain't had a bite in an hour and a half, you automatically start letting your guard down. Whether you know it or not, you're, you're not fishing as good, you're looking at the clouds and the leaves on the trees and stuff. And then when you do get one of those bites, you know, you're going to mess it up, not be paying attention. And that's uh, another thing is the capitalizing on the opportunities you know, not getting many opportunities is, is, is huge. Um, and it's, it goes along with like a, like a, a archery person, you know, they practice shooting a bow as much as you can. You have that, that muscle memory. So whenever you zone out, when that big buck's coming down, you know, everything just takes over. And it's the same thing with fishing. 